Welcome back to the Transform Your Mind to Transform Your Life radio podcast and television show. I'm your host, Life Coach Brenna Young, and sitting in the guest chair today is Matteo Galatis. Matteo is the founder of the Know Yourself Teachings, and today we are going to be talking on the topic, Know Yourself, Connecting to Your Inner Guidance System. Welcome, Matteo. Hey, Myrna. Thank you so much for having me. Really excited to talk and connect and uh, uh, share. Yes, I'm so excited too. Listen, um, one of my favorite sayings is know yourself to grow yourself. So we're going to be, you know, talking exactly about knowing yourself today. So that's awesome. So you guys stick around to the end because this is going to be a, um, a good conversation. All right. So let me give you a short bio on Matteo. Matteo Galetis is the founder of the Know Yourself Teachings, aimed at supporting you to cut through the confusion in the personal development industry and learn about the hidden dynamics that affect your life. He has trained over 200 professional coaches, was a director of a coaching company in South Africa, worked in organizations such as Oracle, Strata South Africa, Mars Africa, NetBank, Transnet, L'Oreal, and has worked with clients from 27 different countries, ranging from successful CEOs, political and public personalities, executives, coaches, trainers, therapists, and entrepreneurs. (laughs) Well-rounded. Matteo is taking the personal development industry to a whole new level by supporting people to find what he calls your transformational why. The one thing that usually prevents people from getting unstuck and achieving their desires. So, wow. So that is, that's an awesome bio, Matteo. And um, it seems that you are in the work of service, helping people to get to know themselves. Again, I'm going to say that word to get to grow themselves, but you're saying in order to connect themselves. So, um, Tell us your journey to becoming a teacher of personal development and how you kind of develop the personal, um, the know yourself teachings. Beautiful question. Thank you so much for asking. My journey, as I'd like to share, began a long time ago, long before I noticed or I became aware that I would want to be a coach. Um, so I could trace it back to my mom's womb <laughs> when, I, when I did some work Go on that myself. Far back, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but it, I've, I've always been interested in um, spirituality, first of all. I was interested in people and human dynamics from a very young age. I used to read some books, not a lot, on psychology. Um, I read books about spirituality. I remember one of my my first spiritual books was The Science of Self-Realization. And I went on from a very young age. I I read uh, Nietzsche, which is um, psychology and some philosophy, Greek philosophy, when I was younger in my teens. So it started round about then, Not, not started. I had a curiosity about that world when I was a young uh, teenager, maybe even younger. Um, I was quite influenced by my parents because they were quite open-minded. And I think until I I didn't know myself, as much as I thought I did, as much as I kind of told myself I did at a young age, there was a lot I didn't know. And um, that not knowing myself completely made me make certain choices. And one of the choices I made was the field of study and the career that I would choose later on um, in university. Um, I trained to be a chartered accountant as a CPA in the US. So that's that's kind of where the school system and my strengths of school took me. But there was Mm -hmm. another part of me that wasn't um, revealed or was uh, dormant, so to speak at that time. And that was my ability to communicate, my ability to speak, my ability to lead. Um, although back, even back in school, people would ask me questions and I would be 
kind of a mentor. Okay. And uh, in, in the accounting profession, that's what I enjoyed most, mentoring of mm -hmm. other people. So mm -hmm. I had a teacher and a mentor inside of me, and I just needed to grow into that um, as, as a person, as a profession. But it, it took a few lessons along the way to realize that the, the career that I chose is not me. And I remember sitting in front of my computer in, um, in the audit offices, and I, I worked for one of the big five audit firms, and I remember falling asleep and being absolutely bored. Even though I had work to do, <laughs> it, was, it was not <laughs> Yeah, exciting. it wasn't stimulating, right? Yes. At right. all, <laughs> at all. And I remember thinking to myself, wow, I would love to go back and work as a waiter in the restaurant because I did that in, in, at 18, 19, and 20. Um, I, I did that at that age. And I, it was so enjoyable for me. There was action. There were people. There was service. There was, you know, get things done and uh, communication, all of that. And I was on my feet the whole day. I would never get bored. I would never get tired. I would never lose interest. By the end of the day, I was exhausted, but that was a physical exhaustion. Mm -hmm. But um, compare that to the audit world where I was literally falling asleep yeah. at lunch yeah. or even in yeah. the morning, I was bored. So th this for me started to bring up some questions. And um, later on, some experiences happened that started to get me looking into uh, spirituality, personal development, self-work, understanding myself, knowing myself. And I went through quite a journey of, um, I, I don't like to call it personal development. It's part therapeutic, part understanding who I am, part developing myself, part learning skills, a lot of things. Did you, and, did you uh, get help or you did it on your own? Absolutely, I got help. Absolutely. Okay. So right. I, I first start, I joined a, a circle of people and that was kind of a mentoring circle, a meditation circle, certain spiritual circles. I trained up in certain skills. Then I came across a form of therapy called family constellation therapy uh, back in 2007. I was told by a friend, go and explore this work. And I was mind blown. Because the, the level of the work, it goes and it has the ability to heal the patterns that we inherit from our parents, from our grandparents, the generational patterns. And mm. I wasn't even aware of this world. So this was like my, my mind expanding and just seeing mm. how this work was facilitated and the massive connection in the group and the love in the group. I was like, wow. So I became a regular going to these group workshops and interventions and eventually I trained up as a facilitator and concurrent mm -hmm. to that I trained up as a coach uh, in 2009 I did formal professional coach training um, okay. and later on I became a trainer of the coaching academy later on uh, I became a facilitator of the trainings uh, and I trained the trainers as well and coaches so and, wow. and along, that, along the way I just built now that's the definition of growth <laughs> you know keep going up. You get one level and you keep going up. That's the definition of growth. It's awesome. Anyway, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and eventually I got to a point where, okay, that work, I, I've had enough of learning and now it's time to start teaching. And I had this question in my mind, what do I teach? What am I here to bring to the world? It's actually since 2009, I was reflecting on that question. What's my purpose? What's my mission? What am I here to do? But I was too young I wasn't ready because I didn't have all the information I didn't have all the experience I didn't there was a lot I didn't have even though I knew that's what I'm going to do mm -hmm. and it took around maybe eight years for everything to come together eight or nine years um, in the meantime I was coaching I was doing therapy work on people because I trained up as a as a um, psychotherapist doing family constellation work plus I, I added other skills and um yeah then then eventually it all came together know yourself i was like wow but i knew this all along but it just came together and clicked at the right time yeah. and uh, at that time i decided okay this has got to become a book so i started writing a book it's not finished yet um okay. and i and then then i parked that book and i thought uh, while i was working with a client i got the idea that there's a lot of people struggling with unworthiness 
So my mm -hmm. focus at the moment is writing a book on unworthiness and how to transform feelings of our unworthiness, because I discovered okay. that there's um, probably around 12 areas that are causes of unworthiness, that they're different. And some people think, oh, I'm unworthy. It's a self-love issue. It's a, I just don't feel worthy or something. But it could be many different causes. It could be from generational patterns. It could be belief systems. It could be diet that's causing unworthiness. It could be a number of factors. And I wanted to make people aware that, hang on, if you're experiencing or feeling unworthiness, there's a reason. And um, so I, I started writing the book. It's in the editing phase. It's not quite ready yet but due to be ready and uh, published this year. Okay. So that's, that's, that's a amazing. snapshot, some snapshots <laughs> of my journey. <laughs> All right, well, yes, you know, our personal journey or our journey to anything, one of the reasons I love asking this question is because our personal journey always directs us to what we need to do. There's very few people that, um, get into a genre without having some kind of connection to it, whether it's a personal connection or whether it's, you know, it's a family connection or they had to be in the space, then develop some kind of affinity for it. And then they, you know, then they start to, um, to teach it because they've been through it. So in your particular case, yeah, that is, that is, that was, that's very interesting that um, you chose accountant which is, it takes a special kind of person. Um, it's, it, it's usually an introvert. Somebody just wants to be behind the scenes kind of thing. And I like when you said that you were able to, to look at something like when you were um, being a waiter, you know, it, that was not the career you wanted to be, but what you, what you did was saying, I was, I felt alive when I was doing that, Absolutely. you know? So obviously, um, me being, you know, behind the scenes, auditing, oh, that's even worse, auditing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, when you're an accountant, you probably talk to people, auditing is just the numbers. So um, that was your first um, aha moment, if we want to use, you know, Oprah's words, your aha moment to maybe, um, I don't know myself really well, because then I wouldn't have picked this career and then of course you went into the 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 spiritual um personal development for yourself so um you touched on something a minute ago regarding genetic patterns that we pick up from our parents um uh, can you connect your genetic patterns to how you started off or how does that work how do we pick up these genetic pa patterns essentially what what happens so when i when i teach inside know yourself i explain in quite a bit of detail the the different ways we take on stuff from our parents and the generations before we may so it it can happen through observation so when we're growing up we have certain experiences and we observe our parents and we say okay we start mimicking what our parents do so that's that's one way, but it runs even deeper. Um, our parents, sometimes they have uh, something unexpressed in themselves, uh, a dream or maybe an emotion that's suppressed. And th they've suppressed it, they've pushed it down. Now, what happens is when they conceive a child, the, the DNA of the suppression or the, the yeah, the, the suppression is obviously encoded into the gene because everything is encoded into the gene and in the gene goes, okay, there's a suppression here. And mm -hmm. that gene goes into the child and the child now has a suppression. Now mm -hmm. the, the job of the suppression is not to be there. Yeah. The, 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 the purpose when something's suppressed, it's suppressed momentarily or temporarily. And at some point in life, it needs to be expressed and recycled. For example, an emotion. If mm -hmm. uh, someone has a, a, a fright, a shock at a very young age, and they don't process it, they don't work through the shock, and it stays inside their system, it's frozen inside the muscle memory in the subconscious mind of the person, what happens is they continue living with that, with that part of them. Mm -hmm. Now... 
if they don't deal with it in their lifetime, that's obviously going to be stored in their genes and it's going to get passed mm -hmm. on to the next generation. Mm -hmm. If the children don't deal with it or don't become aware of it, that's going to get passed on. So this, so we have something in our evolution is already inside of us to help us uh, release uh, traumatic patterns, release belief systems that are outdated, release emotions that are blocked. Um, so when children are born, later on in life, at some point, the suppression is triggered. And that's what usually pushes the buttons of the parents. <laughs> when the children start behaving in ways the parents don't like, or the parents can't control and think, wow, my child is out of character. The child is not actually out of character. The child is just mirroring or expressing aspects of the parent that the parent doesn't want to see inside themselves or hasn't processed within themselves and they're not aware of. So this is okay. what um, Jung called the unconscious or the shadow, um, okay. both aspects. So the shadow is the part of ourselves we deny or we don't like to see that gets expressed mm -hmm. in the children. So that's, that's one way. Another way, uh, just to, to give one more um, structure of how, how patterns can be passed down Let's say three generations ago, uh, great great grandfather had an uncle, and, or had a had a brother, and that brother died at a young age, and that brother died in a war, and his memory wasn't honoured because he went to fight in this war. Maybe the family said, "Oh, you don't belong to the family anymore," and his memory, his his uh, fight wasn't honoured, so they forgot about him. Now. This missing person or forgotten person or black sheep of the family that died, later generations will start to unconsciously um, bring up the memory of this uncle that died by taking on his behavior. So they haven't met him. This is three generations back. Yeah, three generations back. They haven't met this person. Um, they don't know anything about him, but somewhere in the system, the pattern of exclusion has occurred. And because mm -hmm. someone's excluded from the system, and there's a rule in life and in systemic therapy, it says everyone has a right to belong. Everyone has a rightful place. So this uncle, mm -hmm. even though um, he died, he was forgotten, he has a place and his place needs to be honored. Mm -hmm. And because his place wasn't honored, future generations will go and try to include him back into the system. So the system is complete. Mm -hmm. And because he's not, he hasn't been included, what will happen is um, the future generations or the, the great, great grandchild will start acting out in weird ways. Maybe they'll become suicidal. Maybe they will wow. become um, aggressive. Maybe they will become extremely shy. Maybe they will be like just very disconnected and not having purpose. So it could show up. Those could be the symptoms. And a person might go to therapy. They might go to courses. They might go to trainings. They might go to a whole bunch of stuff to try and identify what's wrong with me. But mm -hmm. meanwhile, they're carrying a pattern that happened three generations before. And they're wow. not aware of it. But it is possible to go in and identify it and clear the pattern. So, and we won't know unless we investigate and identify, okay, what's going on with this person? What is the cause of these symptoms? So wow. So do you um do you how do you go back there? You put them on a hypnotic, or how is it possible to pull that out? <laughs> yeah. Usually with uh, family systems therapy, it's done in, in a group format. It can be done one-on-one -on -one as well. I do one-on-one -on -one sessions also, but it can be done in a, um, it, it's the, the most revealing ways done in a group format where you have um, a group of people coming together, uh, let's say 10 people. And let's say out of the group, four people are going to work on, they're going to work on their issue. And the one child comes in there or the one person comes in there and says, uh, okay, I want to work on th these symptoms. Let's say he's feeling lonely and he doesn't know why. He's always feeling lonely, even though there's a partner, even though there's something. So the facilitator mm -hmm. would say, okay, let's deal with this loneliness. Let's call someone from the group to represent you and someone for the group to represent the loneliness. And mm -hmm. somehow the system comes alive and we wow. bring in other people to represent family members and it's mm -hmm. just intuitively worked that, oh, wow. And 
somehow it goes back to three generations back. There's this grandfather that was missing. So it's, it's discovered. It's not something that anybody knows, but it's discovered through having people um, represent inside the other person's uh, family system. I've never heard that before. That is it's, very interesting. Yeah, no wonder you were blown yeah. away. <laughs> it's the most mind-blowing work I've come across. It's uh, oh incredible. And there's, there's nothing strange about it. Uh, or, mm -hmm. you know, once you're in the work and you see it working, it's like, wow, this is a, a world I haven't been aware of. And th that's, that's been my journey is to understand since then, wow, what are the hidden aspects that affect our lives? Because we're very busy dealing with the symptoms, but the cause is usually much deeper. Wow. Wow. Yes, that is, that is amazing. I thought when we first started talking, you were, when you talk about suppressed dreams, um, we know that a lot of times parents live through their children. Let's say if the mother wanted to become a dancer or wanted to go to the Olympics and she never went, then, or, you know, she pushes her child because that was her suppressed dream. But you took it to a different level. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> 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 and what you say is absolutely accurate. That's that's another way it can show up um, from directly from the parents um, to the to the children. Yeah, and that's probably yeah. a, a simpler example. But for some reason, <laughs> the, the next level <laughs> wanted to. Well, that's the it. most common one. That's the most common one. But I also know where you're talking about um, because um, you know I, I follow. Um, I think it's Joe Dispenser. Um, teachings where he talked about 50% um, of our, our genes um, uh, come from our parents and, and things like that. And, um, and, and I know, for instance, that, you know, people could be have this, in fact, I know someone right now that have this uncontrollable fear. And I know it's coming from generations because he hasn't experienced anything in his life that would make him that fearful. So it had to be something that he's bringing forward. So it, it, it's amazing that, um, you know, if you were to go into your therapy, you would, you know, would be great. Somebody representing that fear and, and working to it. I, I think I love this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. it's incredible work. So I'm very blessed and fortunate to have been introduced to that. Um, and it, it makes my personal coaching work a lot deeper as well because I bring in that perspective. Yeah, that is amazing. Now, um, uh, how does this connect to our inner guidance system? Because I know that, um, so right now we're talking about, we're bringing forth um, uh, subconscious patterns from our parents. Um, a guidance system is the, the, your spiritual journey um, where you know, you've got like, we're an angel or your higher self, and they're communicating with you now. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, connect the two for me, or are you connecting them or there are two different paths? Yeah, yeah. I, I like to call the, the, the inner guidance system is the connection to your true self. Um, or, or the, the guidance system that helps you connect to your true self when you're not connected to your true self so um be because there's two there are two aspects of it when you're connected to yourself you're able to distinguish in an instant what is true and right for you versus what is not in an instant there's no debate in the mind there's a sense of yes or a sense of no Okay. Um, and it's not happening from a fear. It's not happening from a desire. It's happening from this inner knowing. Intuition. So, yeah, just knowing. Right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is when okay. a person is connected to what I call the essence, or higher self, whatever it is, but it's yeah. the Source, true. Right, right. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And mm -hmm. I don't want to, I don't want to call it um, not that I don't want to call it. I try to stay away from calling it source or higher self because then a person tries to look slightly outside of themselves. When I yeah. refer to it as your true self, it's you. It's not yeah, right. anything outside of you. It's you. Mm -hmm. So um, I was explaining with a young girl today, um, the, and, and it would make sense to, to share, what do I mean by true self? Because th that'll help understanding 
what is true self, what is not true self, and inner guidance system. Um, and essentially, we all have a persona, a personality that we show to the world. And I uh, say or maintain that this is not you. The persona that you put out to the world, the behaviors, the characteristics that you've grown up with and you, you show up as in the world is not necessarily you. Um, why do I say that? Because beneath that personality, there were a number of experiences. There were beliefs, there are belief systems. There are family patterns. There are uh, shadow aspects. So the, the shadows aspects are in ourselves that we deny and we disconnect from. Um, and there are traumas, possible traumas that, that as children we experience, and there are disconnection from our emotions. So all of that, uh, and we, we can take any one of those and I can show you how it develops into a persona. Mm -hmm. For example, a belief system, I am not worthy. Or let's go with that one. I'm not worthy. Can manifest in a personality in two ways. Number one, a person can, can feel, okay, I have a belief system. I'm not worthy. So if you have a belief system, I'm not worthy. How do you behave? You're very insecure, right? Yes, absolutely. So no confidence, right? Mm -hmm. Insecure, no confidence. That's one mm -hmm. of them. The other way is trying to um, cover up the unworthiness and show that you're worthy. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. if you have a belief system, I'm not worthy, you either develop the unworthiness as a persona, which is not you, it's not that person, it's just a belief system. Or they can develop a um, very hard worker, uh, pushing through um, overachiever, or mm -hmm. um, a people pleaser, or something to get worthy. Yeah. Right. So um, all those that I mentioned, the people pleaser, the th those aspects, they're, they're not the person, they're personas a person has developed in order not to feel the unworthiness in order to they're they're they're, they're they're covering it up so I, I i get what you're saying a lot of times they say the extroverts too the people that always want to be partying the people that always want to be around people um they're covering up some some deep down feeling as well that's why they need to be that way Spot so yeah. um uh, so all right so what we're talking about though is your guiding system knowing yourself so what you're saying is you let people understand that the personality that they're projecting to the world is not really themselves and and um, you help them to connect to their their to know themselves how do you Correct. do that so so we we work through the belief systems that don't belong there anymore like i'm not worthy okay. we work through the family patterns that they've inherited that is not them so when, you, okay. when you're living a family pattern, you're not living you, it's a pattern. Once that's removed, then they have space to be themselves. And then they start to discover who they really are. When, uh, let's say there's an unprocessed emotion from childhood, an anger that wasn't expressed to dad, and I can't be angry at my father, so they suppress anger. Um, mm -hmm. Now I, I should never get angry or um, I should never raise my voice or express my opinion. You know, it could show up in that way. So you have a person that becomes shy and doesn't express their opinion because mm -hmm. they weren't allowed to be angry at their father at a young age. So they've suppressed mm -hmm. this anger. That's another way they develop a shy persona. Um, mm -hmm. So I help them work through all of these. And once those disappear, then they are able to easily sink in and sit inside the seat of who they truly are um, themselves. And from there, they have much more, much clearer guidance regarding their life, because they're able to have access to this aspect of themselves that gives a uh, instant yes or no answer, true or false answer. Mm -hmm. um, th so that's the one aspect of the guidance system. The other aspect is I help people understand how their thoughts and how their emotions guide, uh, support them to guide their lives. So for example, 
if you are walking in a dangerous area, what do you notice happening to you, to your body, to your emotions, to your thoughts? What do you notice happening? Well, you um, you you get into the flight or flight kind of um, symptoms. You're yes. you're vigilant. You're hearing. You're you're you know you're looking around and expecting someone to jump you at any time. But yeah, you're preparing to to fight or flight. So. Correct. Correct. <laughs> And, and mm. there's, you got it spot on. There's certain symptoms and maybe there's nervousness, maybe there's anxiety, maybe there's yeah. stress. So vigilance, yeah, all of that. So when, um, what are those? Those are symptoms. What mm. are they telling you? There's danger. You've got to be right. careful. So you're on high alert um, and careful. Now, you go to the doctor and you say, I've got these symptoms. They're going to say, okay, here's these pills. <laughs> but, yeah. but those symptoms in, in that example that I gave are there for a reason. They're there for a purpose. They're telling you something. So it's, it's feedback. It's guidance telling you, yeah. don't go through the dangerous area. If you're going to go through, through here, you need to be alert. Now, let's say you get through that area and you go through a very safe, peaceful area. How do you feel? Calm, peaceful. Yeah. Exactly. You, so, your system comes back to rest and digest. Is that what the next the opposite is? <laughs> back to homeostasis. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, so people have symptoms. And what I do is I help people to understand how these emotional and thought mental symptoms um, are guiding you towards your truth, towards you being true to yourself and towards you going to the right direction. For example, uh, an, another example on, on the thought level. So mm -hmm. if I tell you, um, let's say, give me a goal that you might have for the, for the next year or from the next two years, any, any goal that you feel comfortable to share. Um, sure. um, buying a Range Rover car. Truck. Cool, me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so if, if I tell you in the next three weeks, you must go out and buy a Range Rover, what thoughts are going to come to your mind? <laughs> Give me the money. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I, I don't have the money. I don't have the money. Right, right, right. Right? But, right. but you have to go and buy one in the next three weeks. It's like, go and do it. What, what symptoms are going to show up? Or make it happen stress. that you can that you right. can buy, yeah. Stress. Stress, right? Mm -hmm. what, what thoughts come up? What thoughts come to mind? Well, the thoughts would be, um, it's impossible. There's no way that I can do this. This person Beautiful. wants me to do this thing, and I can't do it. <laughs> I can't. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So, okay. it's impossible. I can't do it. Okay, those are the thoughts you had. Now. Mm -hmm. Let's change the time frame. Same goal. In two years' time, you're buying a Range Rover. And I say, make a plan that in two years' time, you buy the Range Rover. What thoughts come to mind? Great. I'm celebrating. <laughs> because I'm sure that I can do it in two years. At least, yeah. At least Thank I'm you. That way. Thank you. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm, I'm, there's certainty. I'm sure that yes. I can do it. I, I can do it. Not yes. I can't. So your mm. mind was creating thoughts, telling, giving you feedback of what's possible based on your abilities, based on your plans, based on your capabilities, based on the resources you have, based on your finances, based on the, the whole, um, right. all areas of your life put together and all the possibilities. Like right now, Myrna, uh, in a month time, I can't. But in two years time, 100% I can. Yeah? Right. So, right, right. so th this is what I mean, that your, your mind as thoughts, they give you feedback. So sometimes right. a person thinks, uh, is having feedback in the mind, I can't, it's impossible. And they try to do the affirmations, I can, I, it's possible and all of that. They're right, going against right, the right. natural to trick feedback. The mind. I, sometimes those work, you know, and as you were talking, I remember um, Will Smith he has a famous saying of, about, you know, people like, for instance, that exercise you just gave me um, is that 
it's not my reality that I can go out and buy um, a Range Rover in two months, because you're right. My mind is telling me that even if I say these affirmations that I will do it, there's a 99% a, a possibility that it's not going to happen, right? But there is that 1% possibility. And basically what he teaches is that, or he doesn't teach because he's not a coach, but basically his philosophy on life is that um, don't go for the realistic, you know? <laughs> Don't go for reality, you know, go above reality. So, yeah, I mean, um, yes, I, I totally I agree. Someone, I've heard some strange things that people were broke one day and a millionaire the next. So it, it can happen. But you're right. Your brain no. is not going to go there. Right. Because. Yeah. But be prepared to become the person that is able to match the new reality. The, the reality that you're seeking, be prepared to become the person. A lot of people just think they can convince the mind um, that oh, yeah. it is possible. But the, right. the, what I'm trying to say is that the mind is giving you feedback, is giving you guidance, it. saying with your current planning, your current circumstances, your current finances, your current everything, um, mm -hmm. it's not possible. So mm -hmm. then as a coach, I would say, okay, how can we turn the I can't to an I can? What plans can we put in place? What strategies can we do? Can we, um, can we make it happen? How can we make it happen in two months? Because th then there might be a possibility if we find the right plans and the right uh, strategy. And, and that's, that's how people, that's how it's possible to make things happen. People find a solution. They put themselves under pressure. But right. the, the, the lesson that I'm trying to bring is that you gotta, the, the thoughts are telling you your truth. They're telling you that it's not possible with the right. current circumstances. Right. So, um, so that's what I mean by inner guidance system is that you have mm -hmm. a, an innate intelligence telling you what's true and right for you right now. True, true. true. It's very true. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. You're, 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 you know, I love the subconscious mind um, because the sub subconscious mind records everything, knows everything. And that's your guidance system because it, it, it's able to give you feedback. A lot of times we don't even pay attention to it, but it's giving you feedback, it's giving you guidance system. And yeah, I mean, if you're a meditator, you, you went down the spiritual journey, you can also, you know, get feedback by, by connecting to your higher self, which is correct. a little different from, you know, your lower self. <laughs> correct, correct, correct. And mm. meditation, meditation is one way to connect to go within and uh, get information and get wisdom. Absolutely. Yeah, I know. I, Cause you told me you went through the spiritual journey as well. So that's great. All right. So um, you also talk about behind the beliefs. I know we talked about that a little bit, but maybe we can expand on it a little bit by, um, because you said um, uh, uh, belief systems are difficult to resolve. So um so let's go with our example that we were talking about, this person that, you know, doesn't feel that they're worthy. So you, when you, 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 when you go into the training and the coaching, you help them understand to, to peel away those layers and understand that, you know, they're not, they're maybe they're not feeling worthy because of something they inherited or maybe something somebody said to them 40 years ago or whatever, you know, you peel that back. But why do you think it's difficult for someone to resolve that? Because I think that's part of your, your teachings as well. Yeah, if we're talking specifically about belief systems, the, the challenge in working with a belief system is that um, a, a belief system was created a long time ago. So around um, up to the age from conception, up to the age of seven, eight years old, our belief systems about ourselves and about life and about other people, how we perceive the world is being created. Um, so this is at an age where the, the rational brain, the rational mind is not, uh, th there's no thinking, you're just absorbing everything that happens in the world and making associations and connections. Mm -hmm. So at two years old, a child would see um, and would, would have an experience. Oh, uh, dad uh, told me not to, um, 
not to sing. Yeah, I'm busy singing. I'm a happy little child. Dad says, stop singing. And, and I look at that and I'm like, oh, I'm okay. I mustn't sing. So I, yeah, singing is bad. It disturbs my dad or I'm not a good singer or whatever beliefs the child starts yeah. to create at that age. Yeah. Um, now, at two years old, now, the child doesn't understand that dad was absolutely focused on uh, a, a job and it needed 100% focus. And then right. two minutes later, he would, have, he would have given attention and enjoyed the song. But in, in that moment, mm -hmm. he couldn't. Right. So, um, so what happens is that the child starts to create a belief of um, singing is uh, wrong or I shouldn't express myself. Yeah, I shouldn't right. express myself. I shouldn't sing something like that. Right. Or I bother um, people with, you know, or you're right. Yeah. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah. So, or, yeah. So now they carry that belief system, you know, until maybe they have their own children, right? <laughs> and they will probably yeah. show up right there. They tell but, their children not to sing. <laughs> yeah. But let, let's look at the complexities of it as well. At mm -hmm. that age, so I shouldn't sing, I shouldn't express myself that belief was connected to a certain emotion that that child felt at two years old. The, the shock, the horror, the disappointment, the shame, whatever those emotions were. The rejection, right, right. The, the rejection, mm -hmm. yeah, right. spot on. Mm -hmm. So let, let's work with the rejection. So the child feels rejected. I'm rejected by my dad. I shouldn't sing. Mm -hmm. um, do I as a child want to feel rejected by my dad? No. I, I don't want to do that. I want to feel connected to my dad. So what do I do? I cover up the rejection. Right. And uh, I create another belief system. Um, my father's always busy. Mm -hmm. My father's too busy for me. I create a belief system. Mm -hmm. My father's too busy for me. Um, and that belief system hides the initial belief system. I can't express myself. I'm not allowed to sing, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. So to cover the shame, my father's always busy. To cover the, the rejection, okay? Mm -hmm. So now my father's always busy. Um, I've already numbed uh, the, the feelings around the rejection. I've created a wall and I believe my father's always busy. So now when I come to uh, share some information or speak to my dad, what comes up as a belief system, my father's always busy. So I start creating distance from my dad. Right. So now my dad looks at me and thinks, wow, th this child is always distant to me. Maybe the child doesn't like me. <laughs> so the father starts to create some kind of story wow. around what's, what's you happening. Sound, you're talking about marriages. That's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> as well. Well, in, in marriages, in marriages, they're just playing out what they, what happened to them as exactly. children. Exactly, right, yes, yes, And it's, yes, it's a perfect yes. match. So, um, so yeah, so the, the belief system, the dominant belief system or the service beliefs, belief system, my father's always busy, is the one that creates the persona. But a lot of people might, rarely even get to that belief system because they're dealing with other belief systems like maybe i developed a belief of i'm shy or a persona i'm shy and mm -hmm. because this happens at two years old and i grow up as a shy person um right. knowing that oh i'm just shy i'm just a quiet person so i'll become an accountant and an auditor yeah because i'm shy <laughs> <laughs> All right. I wanted to know how you got to that profession. So this is it, huh? <laughs> this is it. It's... Okay. So, um, so I develop an I'm shy persona, and uh, th that that becomes who I am. But unless we investigate, where's the I'm shy coming from, and allowing the person to investigate and feel the shyness. But a lot of times, I feel ashamed that I'm shy. So I cover up the shame as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there's another layer of emotions connected wow. to that. So now you can see we've built up from, from the initial 
incident, we've built up four or five layers and I've, yeah. I've identified eight or nine layers with some clients to get to the core issue um, or the core belief system. And that's just one belief. <laughs> yeah, you're right. They probably have like 12. Wow. Yeah. So that's why that's you're saying complexity. it's difficult to, um, to resolve. Yeah. 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 So it, it takes a process. It's possible to resolve. It takes a process and it takes a person going within. So the advice I give people is when there is an emotion, when you're feeling something, try not to disconnect from the emotion, but connect to the emotion. Train yourselves to connect to your emotions. Train yourselves to connect to your, uh, your body so that you know how you feel at any time, whether it's good or bad emotions, it doesn't matter connect to them, allow yourself to have these emotions, because that's how you're going to go down into the beliefs and into the other aspects that are hidden inside of you. And that's what we want to identify and remove what's hidden. Because when you remove what's hidden, then you start to become more and more free. Yeah. And that's how you know yourself, which is what we're talking about here. Great. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I had a short stint with a therapist. I think I talked to her for about a month or so. And um, the, one of the things I got, I got from that is that just what you said, you know, I, I, I stuffed down things, you know, like if, if I have pain of some sort, then I stuff them down. And basically what she's saying that whenever you feel a trigger, because it comes back up, whenever you feel a trigger, breathe into it and release it, you know, don't continue to, to stuff it down. So yeah, a lot right. of people do that. The, um, when something hurts them, they stuff it down and then they're, they're constantly triggered when, you know, when something else happens. So, yeah, I like that. So, you know, release it, you know, catch it. And then I think I interviewed an author and she had the same thing, catch it and release it. <laughs> All right. So um, tell us about your know yourself teachings. I mean, formally, how do you do it? I mean, uh, this has been an incredible conversation to highlight your skills, highlight what you do for people. And I will tell you, there's so many people that are walking around that, um, that are, I don't want to use, I used the word broken the other day in my, you know, one of my interviews and, and they thought it was harsh, but it's, you know, it's the word because it's, you're broken from things that happens in order it's past traumas whatever and in order for you to be free know yourself whatever word you want to put on it is you've got to identify it because just like the ego once you identify it you it loses its power over you you know so i mean um what you what you're doing is phenomenal so you know this is the, you know tell us about how somebody can sign up how you offer this training and um how people can connect with you. I want it for people to understand the hidden dynamics that affect their life because we know from many other teachers that came before me and many researchers and scientists that the subconscious runs our life. It is the I stuff said that a minute ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, and and unless we're able to resolve or retrain or recondition the subconscious, um, but doing it the correct way and understanding what's causing um, the, the subconscious world to, to dictate our lives in directions that we don't necessarily want. Um, I wanted to find a way to explain and share with people to understand the hidden dynamics that are affecting their, their lives. And so I put together the Know Yourself teachings and this essentially explains what the inner guidance system is. I go into a lot more detail um, and, and really explain it step by step how, the, how thoughts work, how thoughts become beliefs, how emotions work, how emotions work as a guidance system, what the purpose of thoughts and emotions are as a guidance system. We, we go in and identify, um, if you're not listening to your inner guidance system, how does life bring you back on track? And that's the external guidance system. So I explain how an external guidance system happens to us um, when we're not listening to our own inner guidance to, to guide our lives. And this is when, when things happen, people lose their jobs or um, you know, relationships break down or all those things. To understand those things as a guidance system to coming back to your, your inner truth. 
So um, th then I explain how beliefs work and I go into a lot more detail and I give some more examples of beliefs. Uh, I give some more examples on the family system stuff and I go through the five different ways that we take on stuff from our parents and it just gives people an understanding and also um, a little bit of compassion for the individual, for you yourself to know that, hang on, um, I'm doing this because of things that happened in my past. So it's not something I'm doing wrong now. And that was something that I, that, that I used to, I used to have a very strong whip beating myself up because I couldn't get this right. I couldn't earn that level of income. I couldn't get the right relationship. I couldn't this, I couldn't, you know, I used to make mistakes I, you know, or I perceived them as mistakes. Mm -hmm. But I, I realized that there were so many patterns running my life and at the core of many of them was um, specifically looking at the family system stuff was a loyalty to the family system. So, mm -hmm. which is something I never mentioned uh, earlier. Um, we, we uh, children out of a deep love and loyalty to the family, they forego their own desires and start doing things for their parents for the grandparents, etc., um, yeah. and 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 also start carrying illnesses, patterns, uh, emotions of the parents. Oh, mom, this pain is too much for you. Let me take it on. I'm the child. Yeah. I can help you. Yeah, it's an innocent love and loyalty that we have for our parents, for our family, and that shows. You know, you know, when a, when a person gets to realize that, wow, I'm. I'm doing all these bad actions, uh, all these bad behaviors, because I'm actually mm -hmm. being loyal to the family, not because I want to be a bad person. Mm -hmm. um, that just reframes the perspective and they can start to have a lot more compassion for themselves. So I, I wanted to share the information so people can stop the self-blame cycle. That's one of the one of the purposes and help themselves understand that, hang on, uh, you know, I've been through stuff. And there's ways to resolve it. And yeah, um, yeah so, so I, wanted, I wanted to give an understanding and some practical exercises for people to do it. And um, th there's also a module on level of consciousness. And yeah, the on my website, um, okay. the know the Know Yourself tab gives the information for, um, for the Know Yourself teachings. And uh, I, I also have a promotional... Um, code I, I can give it to you as well uh, or a link okay. that gives to a promotional uh, that, that discounts the teachings so um, I'll send you that link and people can can access okay. that yeah okay so that's that's amazing so it's a course yeah yeah it's uh, I, I call it a set of teachings but it, it is a course people go on and they they learn module by module I suggest one module okay. a week and there's okay. there's 10, 10 weeks of modules so it's it's quite a lot okay. of information, easily digestible. Okay. And uh, okay. I, I, try, I try to explain the spiritual principles and mm -hmm. all these psychological principles for the average person to understand how do we actually operate without getting in, or into all these complex theories and complicated theories. I make it practical for people to understand. Beautiful. That's beautiful. All right. Well, um, um, uh, thank you so much, Matteo. All right, so if you didn't catch that, um, the website is um, Matteo, um, uh, Ma you know, MatteoGalatis.com, and that is M-A-T-H-E-O-G-A-L-A-T-I-S.com. But um, I will have a transcript of my conversation with Matteo on the show page, which is blog.myhelps.us, and I would have links to his website, and also head over to the show page as well, because uh, Matteo said he's going to be sending a, a promotional code that will be found on the link that I'm going to have on the website with a transcript of our conversation. You know, this has been a very illuminating conversation for me. Um, I'm in the space, you know. I am. I'm a coach. You know, I interview um, uh, people in the self improvement, self development um, genre. You know, every week, and I love it when I learn something new. And today I learned something new, and that is genetic patterns and how um, we bring them forward and, um, and a, a, a little bit about how we unpack limiting beliefs. I know that I knew that a little bit before, but um, 
you know, the belief system we know is what um, is is what basically allows us to make decisions. We make decisions based on our belief systems. You know, for instance, you know, I don't know, it just came into my head. But let's say that um, you believe that um, you should never get divorced. <laughs> that yeah. you're going to stay. <laughs> then you're going to stay in a very bad situation because your belief system and, you know, Matteo would tell you, where did you get that belief system from, you know? And obviously it came from your parents. Maybe you heard something in church or whatever it came from and that's your belief. And I know people that have that belief and that's why that just popped into my head. So you've got to realize that every decision that you make comes from a belief system. And now, you know, what Matteo is going to, you know, do in his, in his course is help you look at your belief systems help you look at maybe some of your patterns that could have come from not your fault, but something that you brought in, you know, all the way from the third generation out. So that's, that's amazing. I love it. I love our conversation. I love learning. <laughs> I love imparting wisdom. And definitely what I love is bringing content to you guys so that, so that you can transform your mind to transform your life. So go definitely um, check out um, Mateo's course and his classes and, um, you know, you know, learn something new, you know, um, know yourself. Yeah, let's not forget our tagline here. Know yourself. <laughs> That's amazing. Right, Mateo, like, Thank you so much, Myrna. I really, really appreciate your warmth and sincerity. If there's, if there's one word I can uh, um say to express you who you are it's sincere and uh, I, I love the connection so thank you so much for who oh, you well, are thank you i appreciate that compliment appreciate it any last words that you have for our listeners before we, we we wrap up the last words is a little message that we lack connection in the world um, and the first layer of connection is connection with ourselves so uh, we're too busy watching television. We're too busy distracting ourselves from our cell phones. We're too busy gathering knowledge, watching videos, uh, being partying with other people, going to the outside, whatever it is. Spend some time, a few moments in, in your day. doesn't matter when. Just take some time and gather your energy and go into yourself and just be with yourself for a few moments in a day, connect to yourself. And then from that connected space, go out and connect with others. Connection is the one thing we're missing and it can be healed through connection with ourselves. And then from that connection, going out then connecting warmly with others. That's my message. That's beautiful. Well, thank you. I thank you. That's, that's great. I love that. You know, I am, I'm a meditator. So I go inside and connect with myself all the time. And maybe that's why I love connecting with people because I absolutely love this. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, listen, thanks again for tuning in to the Transform Your Mind to Transform Your Life radio podcast and television show. Until next time, namaste.